Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Always look forward to this. Every Tuesday, we're joined by our buddy Sean Salisbury to talk uh, all things football. Of course, the uh, college football playoff set, as we know that. The Heisman has been handed out to Jaden Daniels, and the Saints continue to struggle, but they did manage to win. Sean, we appreciate you, man. How are you? I'm doing great, buddy. How are you? Doing awesome. Hey, um, it's so conflicting right now with, with the Saints, and I kind of want to go big picture instead of nuanced because the conversation we're having right now is, all right, Derek Carr – Five minutes into the fourth quarter on Sunday, had 37 passing yards. I'm not sure Shauna could get any worse uh, for this team. They had 207 yards of total offense, but they won. His cap number next year is his dead cap number is 52 million dollars. So you're gonna have Derek Carr on the roster next year. But what do you do? Do you do you commit resources to try to lift him up, or do you go into this draft thinking we got to go draft our franchise? What would you do? Yeah, now, Maddie. A lot when I watch them play, and I, I've probably seen what eighty-five percent of their games this year. You know, at, and I, I guess the frustration for me is, you know, the numbers that get put up. I'm trying to figure out: is it the quarterback? I mean, we we got to we got to compartmentalize with Drew Brees, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the compare if if people want to start saying, well, he's not Drew Brees. No, he's not. And we we got to we got to go into it thinking that. Then you look around the league and say, okay, if you're going to go, first off, to, to, to back up a second, if you're going to go for the future, please finally go draft a quarterback in the first round and go that way, okay, and build him in-house and get it going. And, and I'm conflicted on this part, too, because I know Carr's a good player, but I've said on this show yes. plenty of times, and I don't want to belabor it, is I don't believe with the current setup or with that you're winning a Super Bowl. Now, what are your standards? Well, I'd like to think it's a Super Bowl for the Saints and what Breeze and that group set and offensively and defensively. I just don't see how under the current structure of the way that they attack. Listen, you if you can win games throwing for 200 yards, throwing 40 times a week and completing 65 to 68% and, and play that way, play small ball in essence, which they had to do a little bit the last year and a half or so with Drew, mm -hmm. then, then go for it. Do I think... The way they approach offense and 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 the way that they're set up right now that they can get to to February, I don't. I think there's some. I think they've got good enough players too. So, listen, no matter who you go get next year on the free agent market, he ain't going to be. I mean, who's going to be available? I don't haven't even looked, Matty. I usually wait till the end of the season as far as free agent quarterbacks. Now, are you interested in Justin Fields? If in fact the Chicago Bears decide that they're not going to trade the first pick for six picks, three first rounders and all that and stick with Justin Fields. If they move on and I imagine they may have a new coaching staff mm -hmm. and, and, and that, so are you interested in a guy like that? Who's young, got enormous potential, but needs better players around him because he's not going to carry it yet. How, and you better brace for some stuff because he's not going to be nearly as established a passer as breeze here, car here. Fields has got a lot to learn, but he's explosive talent. So you're going to build it that way. I think you need, when I say homegrown, I think you need to draft the guy, build him, let's go three or four years with the same group and build it. I'm not sure the whole structure involved. I've told you, I don't think this coaching staff, now if they win a division and make the playoffs and get beat in the first round of the playoffs, is that enough to save a job? I wouldn't imagine you hear more about that there than, than I do. Mm. I just think if you're going forward, I think you're going to need a, a whole house cleaning, but Carr is going to be there. So for me, Maddie, if we're look, if you and I are in the front office and the coaching staff, and I'm saying, okay, here's where we're headed. Where you're headed is you're going to buy at least another year with Derek Carr, I would think. So you build, go get good players, and if you can find a way to get a young, top top flight quarterback somewhere, whoever that is, whether you work a trade in a draft, whether you work a trade with a younger player now, or whether you find somebody in this draft, I think you have to go do that. I just do. I've been waiting for a while for that to happen where it's the guy where you know, like the Strouds or that guy. So I don't know where he's coming from, you know, depending on where they pick and the possible draft yeah. purgatory as well. So I don't think you're winning a Super Bowl under the current regime. I just don't. Yeah. And so, but I'm not the one signing paychecks. I, I think you can get to a certain point, but I think you're going to hit a ceiling. And I've seen this movie. 
but we're, we're not three years into an NFL career with just a quarterback. But I also caution people to think it's just the quarterback. It's never just the quarterback, whether it's play calling, rhythm, buy in. It just we've we've seen the movie in a lot of different places on this on this team at different places and here. And I think if the New Orleans Saints are going to go forward at some point to get where they want to go, which is not just January, it's deeper than that, is find themselves a guy who, when he walks in the building, the game has changed. The game ain't changed when you walk in building now. It's the Dow Jones. It's up and down. You're not sure week to week what you're going to get. I need to know about 12 or 13 weeks a year what I'm going to get 14 weeks a year with that guy at quarterback, not just a guy. But it's not fair to Derek Carr for us to just say it's his fault. There's a lot of things that go into this, but I need more aggressiveness and more. I see it in, in Houston. They finally got Stroud, and look at – they attack. They, I mean, they are in your kitchen punching you in the face. And if I'm going down, at least let me go down and be smart aggressive, not careless aggressive. So I, I, I just think there's another level to this team. They've got talent. There's still some things missing. And a February quarterback and a February offensive attack – is not part of this team right now. And I think you and I both, I know that that's the cold hard facts, but it just yeah. is. No, I, I'm in complete agreement. Um, do you, how, so, but the reality, and I agree, the reality is they don't have enough draft uh, capital Firepower. or, or right. assets to be, right. to be able to go um, trade for a, a, any type of quarterback. So your options really are, you got to go draft one. How, what do you think about the dynamic, Sean? Because uh, again, Derek Carr is going to be a New Orleans Saint next year. They're not going to eat yes. a fifty-two point eight million dollar cap hit, uh, dead cap hit. They're just not going to. So, what right. do you feel about the dynamic? Like what happened in Green Bay with Rodgers and Love and Favre and Rodgers, or in Kansas City when it was Smith and Mahomes, where you draft a guy and he's going to sit for a year behind your 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 veteran guy. I'm okay with it, especially if you think in those two circumstances, Maddie, you got your guy right. Did you not get, I mean, in Kansas City? Yep. I mean, you, you you got him, at least they think that in Green Bay with love. I have no problem with it. Listen, I'm not, one thing people have to recognize that maybe we all do, I'm not in the feel-good business, man. I've, I've said this before. If I'm a front office, I'm talking about, I want all my players to get buy-in, but when it gets right down to it, when I drafted Jordan Love, and, and I'm not worried about Aaron Rodgers' personality being pissed about it. He still played and won MVPs. I'm not worried about Jordan Love's sensitive. I'm not saying he is a first-round pick that may be a little sent. It's not like you don't get to get in the transfer portal yeah. after your rookie year. You don't get to say, you know, I think I'm going to just up and leave the Green Bay Packers or the Kansas City Chiefs. Matter of fact, it might be the greatest thing because we do a horrible job at times of rushing quarterbacks into it and expecting them to be doing what Stroud's doing. Stroud's the outlier. That's not the norm. What Bryce Young's doing is the norm for a rookie. And what you see Will Levis do, even though he wasn't a first-round pick. So, I'm matter of fact, in this case, do you have a choice? You really don't have one, Matty. You don't. You can't get rid of Carr money-wise. You strapped yourself there. The guy's a good enough player to get you to January with the roster. You're going to have to make a few roster decisions to hopefully upgrade it a little bit. But all of a sudden, they've got, we know their defense can play, depending on what you want to do with the coaching staff. But it's okay for Jordan Love to wait. He waited. Yeah. He's a good player. And he's still got a ways to go. But now we're seeing the guy can play some football. At least you're hoping he's a franchise guy. Mahomes, well, that, that obviously goes without saying. We know he is and is a dominant player. So you don't have a choice right now. You're talking about assets and be able to go get somebody where you're picking, where you are, where the money is. So that is the option you have to take. Car's going to start until he gives the job away, and then you've got to develop that guy that you say, he's not just hanging around to the next draft and the next draft. We've got a guy in waiting that can go do it. And at some point, if Carr, you'll have the most expensive backup in the world if, if he doesn't perform. But he'll perform well enough. Derek Carr always performs well enough to stick around mm. and to get you to a point where he teases you, and then yes, <laughs> and then I'll, and it'll have a Pro Bowl type season, and then it's like, doggone it, where's my next Patrick Mahomes or C.J. Stroud? So you really... It's, our decision really is not going to matter because they really don't have much leeway to do anything but that. So I, I subscribe to it. I'm not worried about the, the, the rookie high pick draft pick being a distraction in my locker room because he doesn't get to play the first year. Oh, well, deal with it, man. And it's just the way it is. So once you get out of the emotional feel good business, you work him. And when it's his turn to play, he will. And if the starting quarterback can't hold the job, then I got an apple in a roadmap and the first bus out of town. Cars just locked in because, in truth, they 
they went and got a guy who cost a lot of money. That probably the money and the performance didn't mix. Yeah. But he'll still give you good football. You're just not going to get consistent, great football every single week. You, what you said is exactly what they have to do. Hold on to him because you got no choice, and go find a guy that by sitting and watching will learn, and when he hits the ground, he's hitting it running. When you look at the NFC South, Tampa, Atlanta, New Orleans, they're all sitting there one game under 500 tied. I mean, it's yep. – and when you look at their remaining schedule, it's all what and what. It really is like – which is the prettiest ugly girl? I mean, who do you like in this division if you had to call it with four games to go? Well, I, I usually, let's say all things were equal and the talent around and you, you, I know that's hyperbolic, but the best roster to me, I'm looking at is the New Orleans Saints. I personally, if the New Orleans Saints don't make the playoffs, it's on them. I know that Tampa's been Baker Mayfield's added energy. They run around on defense. They've got Mike Evans. They've got good players. I know Atlanta with Bijan. And I'll tell you, when you look three years down the road, if the quarterback ever catches up to Pitts and London and, and Bijan Robinson, they're going to be a good team. That They are. But for me, I look at who's got, in my mind, the best quarterback in the division. If, if all things are equal. I always, all things are equal. If they are, I'm going right now at six and seven. Three of those teams are in the same spot. I'm going with the guy that I think is going to make the most, but Baker's got all that energy. We know that Ritter and the, and, and the Atlanta Falcons have been up and down offensively. But I think when it comes down, if I got to throw the ball, who do I trust to the three the most accurate wise, who's been in it longer? I, I would take the Saints. Now, I still think overall they've got uh, more playmakers. I think they've got a defense that can can shut you down as as both other teams in, in Tampa. Obviously, we know against the run, they're stout. But to me, I don't think the same six and seven, they should not be in this position. They, they shouldn't, but they are. So now how do you get out of it? To me, the, it, it, they're the best team in the division. I pick them to win at the beginning. I'm going to stick with them. But self-inflicted mistakes and all those things, that you know, dumb stuff will cost them the division because yeah. I still think they're the best roster. And when in doubt of the quarterbacks in the division, I said, I got to win one game with these rosters. Who would you take? And if I'm not taking the Saints, then I haven't, then I haven't watched enough football. Tampa's good. Atlanta's good. The Saints are better. I don't think any of these teams are long for January. Yeah. Let me just put it to you that for way. sure. Uh man, it what an interesting uh, December this is crazy here in these parts. But you know, Maddie, getting in, and, and I, I sincere, unlike the NC two A tournament, I, I, you know, you're the you're the 15 seed. You're you're probably not long for that either. Right. But when there's only seven teams in your conference, you never know what one injury, one bad quarter, one thing, and it doesn't always have to be the it doesn't have to be the Saints having the bad quarter. So they've got enough players to go into the wild card round and win. Yeah, and but be, I don't know if they've home. got enough. To, that, that that's exactly right. So, but I, I don't think there's a ring going to be fitted on their finger, but it, for them, they should win this division. I think they're the best team, but I, I got to have a little more explosiveness and push on the offensive vertical passing game. Uh, unlike last week, I, yeah. we, we need that, that needs to be elevated and just protect the ball. There's no reason why this defense won't keep in every game. He's on Twitter at Sean Unfiltered. Make sure you download the Pro Sports Fans app as well. Check out the work Sean's doing over there. You're the best, man. We appreciate a couple of minutes every Tuesday. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you next week, Matty. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.